Hello and uh, good afternoon, welcome to the blog and today we're going to be talking about lots of exciting things and you'll be pleased to know that Jack, the uh, rock star, managed to make it through the night <laughs> despite, despite uh, uh, quite a challenging uh, rock song but um, yeah, I uh, had lots of positive feedback and uh, Furious Dragon said he enjoyed the um, the hair, the hair, he calls it the hair whips the most so Mandy cuts my hair, don't you, Mandy? And Mandy's um, our camera lady today. And um, what I thought was that if we ever have to get into social distancing haircuts, we could always use the hedge trimmer. Um, can you imagine, Mandy, if you're cutting my hair with a hedge trimmer? Do you think there might be a temptation to uh, <coughs> off with his head? <laughs> There's a big smile behind the camera. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to ask you any questions today, Mandy, so I want you to be at peace and relaxed. But the um, no, I, I quite like the, uh, the, the 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 feedback and the amount of lovely um, comments that you guys have given me. It just tickled me pink. I mean, I just have such a good giggle in the morning when I wake up, and I'm quite I'm quite looking forward to seeing the banter. I'm really enjoying the banter. So thank you for your furious dragon, and uh, appreciate your support. Uh, Hamlin wants me to do. He wants me to rock on. He wants me to to put it in Shane's terms. Apparently, Jad tells me that means rock on amongst all the rockers. So I hope Shane enjoyed it, he's probably cringing. But Shane, I'm gonna put down a challenge for you. I want you to get get your guitar out and give me the real, give me give me what you've got, man. Yeah. I wanna see you in full flow and I wanna see it on hopefully in the next couple of weeks on your, one of your channels. It'd be really good to see Shane really rocking as well. So, um, what else is going on? We've got, um, yeah, Rich at Predator BP has uh, made a few nice comments, and thank you, Rich, for your contributions. And uh, he's loving the banter, and uh, <laughs> I think he's got a really good good sense of humour. Um, and I think he likes the fact that I asked the question. I said to him, "Have any of your snakes been diving off the diving board?" Because you know he bought those really big um, pool, what I call swimming pools. I think they're massive dog bowls. So me and Jared have been having a bit of joke and just visualising his snakes kind of going doing, doing, doing and diving off this diving board. So I asked Rich, I said to him, I said, have any of your snakes um, had a go on the diving board yet? And his response was, only those who um, have got their 100 metre badges, <laughs> which kind of tickled me pink. So uh, I, I responded to him and I said, well, I've got a feeling, I'm hoping and praying for you, Rich, that your beautiful, gravid pastel clown does a back somersault with an eight an eight combo twists off the high diving board. So I just imagine her going up there and she's kind of like bouncing with a big boing, boing, taking all her eggs with her, coming up, doing this backward somersault, whee, and then going into eight combo twists. Anyway, that's my sense of humor. Um, but what I really mean is I'm quite looking forward to when she lays rich and then she can produce some lovely combos. So good luck on that project and congratulations on having such a an amazing clutch coming your way. I mean, it's the first one I've really heard of. Um, now, also, the good news is Wayne is going to be joining me for um, the first Zoom meeting we're going to have on Wednesday, and hopefully broadcast that on Thursday. So thank you, Wayne, for joining me on the Zoom. He's going to be the first subscriber to join me. And I know Rich wants to do something with me on a collab, but he wants it to be, hopefully, we're going to do a funny one. And I suggested to him we could do one on clowns. So we go, I mean, that gives you a perfect license to clown about, doesn't it, really? But um, I want you guys to put your ideas in the comments. If Rich and I do a collab, what would you like us to do within reason? Um, obviously, on the snakes, but if you want any banter, anything funny you want us to do, put us down a challenge to really uh, have a good laugh on that collab. So uh, feel free to put some ideas down. And also, I'm going to ask for some future topics. So, um, any ideas of future topics, please? Now, I've already got a very strong thread developing at the moment based on new facilities. Now, you'll know that we built this new facility in the middle of COVID, and I've got two or three other people who are following us who are even in the process of building, designing a snake room or a facility. So, what I thought I'd do is I thought I've got pictures of the development here, right from ground level up. And I could show you those pictures, maybe give you a rough idea of costings, give you a rough idea of how we went about it. Because I think we built this as a family for half the price. So what you think, you look at this and you think it's going to cost a fortune. It doesn't necessarily have to. It's actually cheaper to build with bricks than it is to build with timber. Uh, as long as you've got access to a really good um, brickie, who can help you. Uh, we actually laid a few of the bricks ourselves here as a family. The 
friend of ours who's also a family member helped us with the brickwork and uh, we he taught us how to lay bricks and we actually got everything done from scratch. Jared did the majority of the timbers in here, he did all the timber work, Adam, Nathan, Emily and even little Eli got involved and I'll, uh, with the permission of mum and dad, I might even put a picture of what his, what his contribution was. <laughs> so, anyway, it's all good and exciting and I really, I love it. If, if Richard's inspired us to kind of do this and my videos are inspiring you guys to expand your facilities, then I'm going to be so happy, um, so happy for you. Um, so it's such a great blessing to have one of these and to me, it's like coming on holiday. Every time I walk into here, it feels like I'm in somewhere like the Caribbean because I can go with my shorts. If you look at my shorts here. I'm always wearing shorts, never wearing socks and shoes. And I've been told I've got feet like Frobo, uh, not Frobo, it's my dyslexia coming out again. What's the name of the, uh, man, what's the name of the character of um, Baggins? Fro Frodo. Frodo. Frodo Baggins. Can you just home in on my feet, Mandy? Just zoom in and just show people that I've got hairy feet. And uh, yeah, so we're going to have to do something and I've got some really good ideas on um, uh, on some future fun acts we're going to do and you're going to find I'm going to build up a wardrobe and Mandy's very crafty in more ways than one. She's a dressmaker, she made her own wedding dress, made all the bridesmaids dresses, made a lot of the outfits in our wedding and we celebrate 30 years this year, don't we Mandy? And we're going to look forward to hopefully if lockdown allows us to have a holiday, if not we're going to have a holiday from home, aren't we Mandy? And, uh, we're going to make it happen. We're going to celebrate our 30th, and that's later in the year. So my thoughts were, uh, we make a wardrobe of clothing for me, so every time I come out with a different character, I can really dress up, and I'm going to probably let my hair grow a bit, so when I'm doing those head swipes, you're going to get proper effect. And uh, I've got a little gym, which I'm going to get into training, because I've got a hip, hip issue. I've put on about an extra stone, so I want to get rid of that stone and I want to become super fit again so that I can really move because you probably noticed at the end of that film I was struggling to get off my knees and <laughs> that's not good. Now I probably should have an operation on my hip but I've held back because of two things. Number one, obviously Covid is not helping. I wanted to make sure that other people use the NHS rather than myself so I've been a little bit selfless there. But I've got to be careful that I don't allow my body to get so damaged that I'm not going to have movement. And so it's a fine balance between holding back for others, but also making sure you're going to be strong going forwards. So, that's enough of me. Let's get on to some snakes, Mandy. Let's go over and look at some behaviour of some of our snakes. So this is the behaviour slot. So if you're going to come and join me, man. Today we had three more fresh new sheds, and they were all perfect. That tells me my humidity is on point. So... We've also got some girls that are bowl wrapping. So let's have a look at the new bowl wrappers. So over here, Mandy, we've got Phoenix, which I didn't show yesterday. Come and have a look at this one. She's still bowl wrapping. Now oh, she's come off. She was bowl wrapping this morning. There she is. And she's backed off her bowl wrapping now, but this morning I caught her bowl wrapping. So she's building follicles. And I think the reason why she's come off that is because I tried to help her a little bit and I sprayed down the back of the rub, made an adjustment because I knew she was seeking cooler conditions. I thought maybe she needs a little bit more humidity in there, maybe she needs a bit cooler to help her. And since I've done that, she's come off the bowl and she's relaxed and she's actually gone back and adjusted to where I've cooled the rub. So that heat grading is so important. I learned something here that we think we're helping them. What we've done is we've, um, she's had to adjust to my correction thinking I was helping her. So it's interesting, isn't it? Let's see if Toast is still bowl wrapping. So we're looking at our girls that are building follicles at the moment. Have a look at that man. So she's kind of partially bowl wrapping. I wouldn't say she's hugging it, but she's still around the bowl. And we're hoping to get an ovulation soon. Now, the other thing I've done today is I've tried an experiment. I'm experimenting with humidity at the moment. So you'll notice that virtually nothing has any heights in here. And you might think you're crazy, snakes love heights. But the rub system is designed in such a way that it almost creates a hide for them because it's so dark in here and it's, you know, once they get behind everything, it gives them a nice degree of protection. But what I've noticed that by using um, uh, paper towels, a lot of the snakes have chosen to go underneath the towels because they want cover and they like the comfort. Now if you think about a baby that's growing in an egg, it's covered in that egg 
its natural instinct is to go for cover. And also, from a predatory perspective, snakes are very conscious of the fact that birds of prey will be leaping down and they want, to, they want cover. So, in order to help them with their well-being, I thought I need to step up the cover for my snakes because I probably was too relaxed. But what's really nice is if I need to put any more confidence in my snakes now, I've got loads of hides that I can pull out of the bag and give them extra comfort. But at the moment, everything's comfortable. And if they're not comfortable, they're choosing to hide underneath the paper. But that may not be necessarily the best way. So what I've done is I've put in an extra layer of paper on every snake today. It took me quite a while. That's why this video is going out late. But what I've done is I've um, got a technique where I put paper over the snake, over its head. I then spray down for the humidity adjustment so that it doesn't actually hit the snake. And they're just totally more at peace. I use 90 degree water to spray, spray down. And I'm finding that the snake's a lot more calm and less um, skittery. And I'm going to do an experiment to see how happy they are in the next day or two by having that extra cover. And I'll report back to you and let you know how it's all going. And I've done the same with the hatchlings. So the hatchlings and the adults now have extra cover. And I'm just seeing whether I can take my husbandry to the next level and give them a little bit more comfort and a little bit more help with their humidity, with their cover. And it's small adjustments like that that can make a huge difference to your happiness and their happiness. So that's just a little point there. Um, let's see what other things I've been doing. Yes, the other thing is over here, I'll just show you my holding rubs. Now this is a holding rub over here. So when I've got my trolley out and I'm doing a changeover, I've got to put the snake somewhere. So we put them in a holding rub with a lid. And for the hatchlings, we have up here another holding rub with a lid. Now, it dawned on me, when we're talking about hygiene, that there's 120 snakes going in and out of these rubs. And you've got to make sure that you sanitize the rubs every time. Because if there's one problem with one snake, and you put a whole bunch of snakes through the same holding tub, you could be, without realizing, infecting a snake. One, one infection in one snake could hit a lot of, a lot of others. So today, it took me longer, but I made sure I sanitized every holding tub for every snake that went in there. And I also put paper towels and changed the paper towels. And I sprayed everything down with F10. So that's a, that's a tip that I think is very good to do because we've got to hold the snake somewhere and we don't want to be putting them in lots of rubs all the time. We tend to use one holding rub, but we need to make sure that's sanitized. And the other thing I did is I washed my hands, I wear gloves, um, so I've got some throwaway gloves and I wear gloves and I wash my gloves. I don't take them off and change them with every snake. I wash them every time I touch a snake. That means that the gloves are clean again because you don't want anything going on a glove as you pick up your next snake. So take your time, go through your snakes carefully, wear gloves, wash your gloves, then come back and do the same again and you go through it's quite meticulous, but I actually felt really good about doing that today. It made me feel an extra level of hygiene coming into what we're doing here at uh, New Forest Morphs. And I think we'll see how that impacts over time. But it's just a precautionary measure, and I think it's a wise one. So, the other thing is that we've got... Um, yeah, what I did today is I took a little bit of time out and I started to hold more of my snakes. Sunday is my day of rest, so I don't do too much work. So I went through and picked out lots of snakes during my own personal um, time, sat down on one of my chairs and I just enjoyed my snakes. Now what's the advantage, do you think, of holding a snake? What can it bring us and what can it do for the snakes, having that bonding time? So I'm going to get Hercules out and we'll talk about that for a few minutes and then we'll do just, just do that first and then see if I can find Hercules. So here he is. There you go, man. Now look, look how comfortable he is now. You know we talked about putting in extra bedding. You see the extra bedding in there? Not sure you're getting good light here. Yeah, let me just let there be light. Right, is that better? So let me show you what I've been talking about. So come and have a look here. So water bowls at the front. You've got bedding underneath, a double layer of bedding. I just put a little bit of light warm water on that bedding so there's a bit of humidity in the tub. And then I get another one of, I'm almost tucking them into bed here, look. You see I've got another piece of tissue there and I anchor it with the water bowl. 
And that was lovely because it went over him and it gave him a hide. And every snake needs a hide. And I've realised that I've probably been too relaxed on that. And I want to see the impact on the snake and how, how happy they are. Because the key for good husbandry is to reduce the stress of your snake. The less stress, the more resilience, resilience it has to disease. So let's see if little Hercules wants to come out. Oh, he's absolutely gorgeous, man. He's such a beautiful animal. He's our five gene powerhouse male. And Jad's been feeding him. And just look how big he's getting, man. You see how big he is? Isn't he beautiful? He's got such a lovely temperament as well. Um, should we give him away and see how he's weighing? He came in to us at about 100 grams. And we've had him for a few months now, a couple of months. Let's just see how much he weighs. I'm going to guess 200 and... I'm going to say 290. There you go, 294, so not far off. So, he is nearly 300 grams, which is lovely. Let's take him down and we'll have a, a little chat about some, some other things. I've got a thought for the day uh, for everybody. So let's go and have a little look. So the thought for the day comes from a guy called, let me just shut the door because we don't want it to get too cold in here for the ambient temperature. So we like to let a little bit of fresh air come into the facility because we think it helps with fresh air and it helps to um, keep us cool because it's very warm in here. So we like to, Mandy as well, same as me, she can overheat in here and I do. So we like to have a little bit of cool air when we're in here and a one or two degree drop in your ambient temperature for about half an hour isn't going to cause a problem. Um, it will increase the cost of your heating of course but sometimes you're just going to have a little bit more comfort and we switch the fans off because we don't want you guys to get too too much noise on the camera so but normally there's fans blowing it up here but Hercules wants to come and play with me absolutely gorgeous so Hercules um, you are beautiful the thought for the day is from again the same guy as yesterday Steve Covey and his thought was are leaders born or are they made now Hercules, what do you think? You're going to be one hell of a leader in this group here, I can tell you that now. With such powerful genes and a lovely temperament, being in the clown, enchi, leopard, pastel, and I've lost the five genes. I've probably got all five genes, leopard. So there's one other gene in him. I can never remember all the genes, but he's got plenty of genes in him. Um, but he will be my future clown stud. So he's going to be a powerful leader going forwards because he'll be putting his genes in quite a few of our clown girls once he's up to size. He's still about only 300 grams. We'd like him to be seven or 800 before we start using him. So I think it will take another six months. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that, that uh, Hercules will come into his own in November, probably October, November this year for the following breeding season. And it's our responsibility to prepare him for that. So we're gonna look after him, nurture him, but um, what are the advantages of actually taking out a snake? Well, number one, it calms us down. So snakes are great at calming us down. And we've got a new subscriber who um, I'll, I'll mention, uh, I think it's Kirsty. She's got a beautiful family, two beautiful daughters. And she's been asking me questions um, on, uh, I think, on, on her husbandry, which we've been communicating. But uh, I wanted to give her a big thank you because she's in her final year of nursing. She's going through a really stressful time with COVID. And our heart goes out to you, Kirsty, and your girls, and your snakes. You've got a little bird, bearded dragon called Bob. So hello, Bob, and hello to the girls. I hope you enjoy our channel. She loves Richard, a predator BP. And when Richard did the Christmas collab, that's how Kirsty came to our channel. So thank you, Richard, because you're bringing some wonderful people over to our channel who are beautiful people. And uh, we thank you very much for that. Um, so the other things that it does is that Hercules is getting some exercise. So you can call me Phil and he can be Hercules and we're going to give him some training ready for November. So we'll be taking him to our snake gym. I'm just going to introduce that concept to you guys. I'll be building a gym for our snakes so they get really strong and muscular. We're going to be giving them some target practice, particularly the boys, so they know what they're doing. 
Um, we're going to be just doing a whole bunch of fun things with the uh, with the snakes. But yeah, we're going to have a little snake gym. <laughs> going to get some weights. They'll be pushing weights. Yeah. But if anyone's got any funny ideas of what we can do for our snake gym, let me know because I want to give them some good mental stimulation. A lot of people don't realise that snakes are very intelligent and they need to be mentally stimulated like any other person or animal. So if they spend all their time in those rubs, you don't get them out. Don't, th don't expect a happy snake. You've got to spend time with them. Get them out and enjoy them. And you'll notice that every film I put out, I'm always either with the snake or something's going on with the snakes. So basically, I would recommend that we box clever here. So even when we're doing particular tasks, we can multitask sometimes with our snakes as well. Um, the other thing is, I've got the opportunity to, to inspect Hercules. So when you're playing with your snake, you're actually inspecting them in a very natural way. And the things I'll be looking at is, I'm looking at these eyes, which are gorgeous. And you can zoom in on him if you like, man. Come a bit closer and let's give our viewers a really good close look at, look at this snake. To be, just to read his health and how to read his health. Now, a little bit of tongue flicking is good. Too much tongue flicking is a bad sign. They get very nervous if they do lots and lots of tongue flicking, but the occasional tongue flicking is very good. The other thing that you'll notice, a snake, when it's panting or breathing heavily, now look at his body. He's not, he's not worried, he's not, he's not upset, he's not kind of in panic mode, he's chilled, he's relaxed, he's enjoying some time with me. But if you get a snake that is heavily panting,